Welcome back. Well, we'll continue now at the commodities market update. And guess what? We are talking about mangoes. Over the last five years, mango production has been on the rise in Africa. In West Africa, annual production of mangoes is about 1.5 million tons, representing 4% of global mango production. At the same time, post harvest losses for the West African region are estimated at massive 50 to 80%. And these losses are largely due to or storage. But we want to talk about that now with Mayo Aige, a research analyst at Financial Derivatives Company. Hello, Mayo. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, although West Africa accounts for 4% of global mango production, post harvest losses is still a major challenge. How can countries in this region improve the mango value chain in order to curb this post harvest losses and boost income for the farmers and, of course, for the government? So um, the mango fruit is a very perishable product fruit. It, it has a short shelf life at room, te room temperature. It only lasts about four to eight days. And then, like you mentioned, it's what the post-harvest losses are due to largely to poor storage facilities. But there are also other factors involved in it. Apart from storage facilities, you have the poor handling um, farming techniques and handling by the, or mangoes by the farmers such that some, some farmers shake mango, mango trees to harvest crops, which is, which is bad because the mango fruit has a very um, delicate flesh. And so shaking it leads to damaged, damaged fruit. You also have them not using right farming techniques like um, cover crop protection in order to guard against diseases and pests. And all of these also have had an impact on post-harvest losses because they are producing um, fruits of poor quality. And then there's also the part of logistics, transporting the um, mango fruits from the rural areas to the urban areas. Because we have bad roads, that process of transporting the goods leads to um, about 10% of um, damages to the produce that have been harvested. In order to curb these, these um, post-harvest losses, governments in this region need to look at these factors that have been contributing to huge um, post-harvest losses. And one by educating the farmers on best agri agricultural practices in order to reduce the post harvest losses, the damage um, level or number of damaged um, mango fruits that they have. And also, the governments also need to improve upon their road infrastructure. But I think that one person thing that governments in these regions need to look into is into the processing of mango um, fruits, processing it into um, products such as juice, mango juice, you have the dry fruit. You already have, um, like in Nigeria, for instance, we have companies such as Real Fruit. Uh, I think a, a company. I think they produce real fruit, a product called. They have dried mangoes. They need to look at giving incentives to um, companies like this in order for them to also boost their own. Um, to also um, get more involved in the processing angle of the government also need and private sector also need to. Um, uh, what do we, we say, invest more in processing centers in major mango producing areas. All right. Well, India is the world's largest producer of mangoes, produces an annual volume of 18 million tons, which is 20 times more than Nigeria's total production of about 900,000 tons. At this time that there's a surge of COVID-19 in India, how is it affecting the production and supply and what lessons can Nigeria learn from the production and handling process of mango in India. Okay, so um, India, India, the the last year when the pandemic happened, India, the it had a negative impact on um, the supply of mangoes to the local markets and export markets in India, and also this year we're beginning to see that it's going to have another impact. With the, it might have another impact with the surge of cases, like you have mentioned already. For the second year in a row, in, uh, India will not be exporting mangoes to the U.S. And U.S. is, is like one of its is major um, export market for mangoes, and that may actually have a negative impact again on its um, exports, man, export, ex, export of mangoes, because this is second time, second time in a row, second year in a row rather that they're having this issue, and so it might have a negative impact on them. But then, it's expected that even the consumption of mangoes in the U.S. would um, Increase and with the rollout of vaccine, vaccines in the U.S. and hopefully India, we expect that there will be um, 
an improvement in and a decline in cases. Hopefully, they won't have to experience this for a third year in a row. For Nigeria, I think that we have so many challenges affecting our agricultural space. And then countries like India, even though they have a larger land area for cultivating mangoes, they have been able to invest in technology, better farm, practice, um, farm practices that have helped boost their own mango production over the years. So for Nigeria, we need to address the major agricultural challenges that are affecting our own output, such as lack of capital, low mechanization, poor um, handling of poor farming techniques. We need to address all of this and see how India is doing it, the, the way they have been able to include technology to improve their own production and also input, put that into our own production unit. That I believe that that will help us, that will help boost our own local production. Well, unlike other agricultural commodities that have wide supply demand gap, the domestic demand for mangoes is significantly lower than supply. How can we explain this? So the mango fruit is a seasonal, highly seasonal fruit, and in its peak season, the, the, the supply is usually higher than demand, and we see um, um, we see low prices for it. But then we know that mango is nutritious and everything, but there's a lot of people take it in moderation because it has a side effect. It can lead to overeating, it can lead to diarrhea, indigestion, and it's actually harmful for diabetic patients. And so maybe this knowledge, maybe this knowledge has actually um, limited the demand for mango so far. As demand for mango. So a lot of people do not demand for mango. That's why the demand is not as high as the supply that we have. So I think I think this is a major. This may be a factor um, contributing to that. Mayowa, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on uh, Business Incorporated and enjoy the rest of your day.